Well, hello, everybody. My name is Sarah, and this is Geek Girl, Pearls of Wisdom. And here we are. We're nearing the strike day as I record this. Um, I find it very interesting. I go online, and I listen to other gig workers talk about it, the pros, the cons, the the anger, the excitement, the hoping for something to change. It's all very, very interesting. When I was a little young one, when I was, oh my God, I think it was, I don't even think I was 19 yet. I worked for a truck company and um, it was a Teamsters Union truck company and the office was not organized. And um, another person and I brought in the Teamsters Local 25, a real rough and tumble um, Teamsters Union out, out in Boston. And um, yeah, it was great. And so the benefits just tripled and soared in value and, and it was great. And um, the first thing they did was lay me off. I guess that's, that's a typical thing when they find out who were the organizers. And I really didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that it increased my pay and um, the benefit package. And of course I was full time back then who cared about your health, but I, I know it included health insurance. And um, and it was just an interesting time. I, I did love that job. Um, and so at that point I was preparing to get married and um, I was marrying an Air Force man. He was local. We graduated from high school together, but he was stationed at Rat Patterson Air Force Vice in Dayton, Ohio. And so we moved out there and I went to work for a truck company out there and I immediately did the same thing with their office. I brought in the union and um, of course the office workers were very thankful. <laughs> so I was a little ball buster back then, but, um, and it did, it did make all the demands. You know, you had to, you had a union boss and a rep and, and you were totally protected. Those those things were, were great back then. I mean, we're talking early 70s because I'm 71. But it was an interesting take. And um, I never participated in a strike at that point. It was just business as usual, just better taken care of by the union benefits. And now we have this strike coming. And I don't think I've ever worked at a place that had strikes. Um, you know, when I, in all of my gig work, it was things like, you know, cleaning houses, delivering newspapers, um, being a bartender for hire, being a server for hire for um, catering companies, things like that, as well as, you know, doing, working for restaurants, being a bartender and a server, doing all those things for so many years. But when I had my own businesses of like cleaning and um, the newspaper, taking care of people. Um, it was, I guess it's, it's gig work before gig, you know, it was just side hustles where money came in, usually cash, nobody knew, nobody was the wiser, no taxes paid, things like that. Those were the good old days. So with the Instacart strike, I'm I'm kind of in the middle of both of those things because in all the decades I've done gig work, worked for myself, worked under the table. There's another another term that we used to call it, moonlighting, we used to call it. It was always about um, just making side money, hush money, down low money, and um, there were there were no benefits whatsoever. And that was always the way that gig work um, came out. You know, it was expected you use your own car, you use your own cleaning equipment, your own cleaning supplies. Um, you know, you just provide everything that you need. There was never the um, idea of any life insurance or um, better this or better that. There were no strikes for more. It was just clearly an underground economy, which I'm sure still exists. I'm just not doing it right now. And so way back in May, I saw the tide turning 
with gig work and it just became crazy and I was blaming it all on traffic and then the wait at stores because they couldn't hire people like at Starbucks, you know, waiting 15 minutes for little Missy's Vende Latte Grande, whatever all that Starbucks stuff is. And then, you know, the 20, 20 minutes after the 15 minute wait, not to mention getting there to deliver it. And it was, I'm thinking I did this for 350. And if it was Uber, there was a better chance of getting a tip. With DoorDash, there was like rare that I got a tip, but it became a very um, time consuming, energy costing, car wear and tear event for the few bucks that it was. And um, Instacart still was having decent batches. You know, I never strive to do a hundred item type of batch. I was always happy with the, you know, around 50, sometimes doubles, sometimes even triples, because sometimes the triples um, had like 40 items in them. And there was like a $25 total tip. So it just seemed to me that they were batching small things. It would have even been nice if each batch was $7 in the sense that they're striking for that. I totally agree with that. I mean, we should not be penalized when they combine the batches. Uh, I'm all for that. But some of the things that I, I have heard, um, people that are at the top that are part of this whole collective, um, I think some of their demands are more employee-based than gig worker. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm not sure where I stand about that. I don't know. You know, Instacart hasn't paid attention to us for months. And it was long before Fiji came along, but Fiji just kind of put the lid on any communication. We can't even we get communication when we are doing a shop and we have issues. You know, it takes so long because they try to just have us make do with that virtual assistant, which is like beyond annoying. You're stressed out. You're sitting there looking at the ice cream that's beginning to like melt, right? You've got meats and, you know, it's just that cluster. You just want to deliver. You want to make money. And, you know, unless you do gig work, you don't know that feeling of like how long 10 minutes takes to get a real person to text with, not even talk to. Because Instacart, of course, they only have the phone to call you to tell you that the customer is reporting a non-delivery even when they got it, right? No matter how many pictures we take, they still get their free food. So many, so many frustrations. And so as I was growing up, I always had a W-2 job plus the, um, the gig work. It was just how it was for literally decades. You know, it was the evening hustle, the weekend hustle, the holiday hustle. And, you know, you do... I did my like W-2 where I had the full benefits of like weekends and holidays and nights off. And those were the times that I was like cleaning houses and bartending at weddings and, you know, working in restaurants for that extra money. It's It was just the nature of the beast, especially here in a resort town, resort community, all of Cape Cod, where, you know, you could get these jobs and people paid you. I mean, I remember at the restaurant job that I had um, serving and bartending, you know, then he'd throw me $75 to do dishes for a couple of hours when like the dishwasher called out or something. And so I was always getting cash sort of little jobs and I didn't expect you know, anything else from it. When I was a waitress, we didn't have benefits. There was no health insurance. And um, we didn't even have to file our tips. And then that changed while I was working. But we're talking 30, 40 years ago. And so then we had to report what our tips were. And out of our paycheck, which was like $1.72 an hour, came the taxes as if we, you know, the three, $400 on top of that, <clears throat> that we claimed, and, and claimed is the key word here because we always made more than we claimed, we were taxed on it. It it was a different time with different understandings about how it worked. And and so I know that, um, you know, in the marriages I had 
and have today with people that are contractors, they have their own business like Greg does. You know, there's a lot of cash jobs, cash exchanges that go on. It's just understood. And there's no benefit package that comes with a gig, you know, be it cash or, or even a check. I don't know. So when I see what some of the demands are, I'm just, it's a little, you know, reminds me of like an employee with benefits versus a gig worker. It was, there was just that understanding that it was all side hustles. And so like a lot of us, we turned and we started using the side hustles as the full-time job, like I did with Instacart. And it worked. My insurance is covered because I'm over 65, so I get Medicare with a supplement on top of that, the Blue Cross Blue Shield. So I, it, you know, that was the only thing. If I wanted a day off, I took a day off. No day not working meant no money coming in. That's just the way that it is. Um, you know, now that I have a W-2 job on, on top of any gig work that I do, I can take a day off. I can be paid for a holiday, not work or work, get the benefit of that in my paycheck. That's taxed. I mean, it's just understood. So I'm not really sure when I hear what some of the demands are, and I really don't like the demands. And I'm not, I'm not a person that gets stuck on the wording of something. But that just sounds like, you know, <laughs> something like Inst someplace like Instacart is just going to push back on that. I don't know. I mean, they don't do anything for us now. I can't imagine them meeting any demands. The, the one demand that I do believe in is being paid a nice base pay for each batch and a raise back to what we were getting per item as our payout and the default tip starting at 10% because the 5%, it's just a slap in the face. But the cost that it takes us to get out there, I guess if you just do enough, it all gets, you know, it all works out with the car. There is a lot of wear and tear and there's a lot of wear and tear on the outside of the car as well. The parking lot dings and scrapes. The day that I got my Camry, the next day, you know, somebody it was, it's probably a $2,000 scrape from here all the way down. And they left, it was hit and run. And I wasn't going to get into the insurance and all that kind of stuff because you pay for that in the end too. So I don't know. It's, uh, I just have mixed feelings. I won't be doing Instacart on that day. Um, you know, backing those that, that are, you know, really striking versus just not shopping to support the whole thing, but some of the demands I'm not in favor of. So anyway, that's just my two cents, three cents, five cents. <laughs> and um, I honor what everybody is choosing to do. It's just, you know, how it goes. And um, let's hope that something happens from them, but I, I have no expectations of a company that doesn't honor us now. Um, it's all about what they're making and looking pretty for the IPO sale and, you know, hopefully thinking that somebody's going to take them over. I don't know. They're not good to us. This is no surprise. They never have been. The strike isn't going to care. They aren't going to care because so many people will still shop or they'll do the alternatives. And if you're a customer, you can go from Instacart to Shipped, right? We're not striking against Shipt or Corner Shop or any of the other venues, DoorDash, they're now in the grocery business. So who knows, you know, drive up and go where I work, it doesn't cost anything. So people can put in their orders for hundreds of items. The store pays me to shop. They can either pull up or have point pickup or DoorDash come and get the items. And they're paying peanuts too, unless the order sits for a while. And I know that the people that do strictly grocery delivery, wait it out to see the order go from $8.39, which is kind of their bottom thing for point pickup, up to 16 or 20 or something like that. So it's, it's an interesting game that we play. And for all of you, no matter what side you're on, I wish you the best on Saturday. And I hope that you get 
what it is that you're looking for, and I will not be shopping to honor um, the people that are striking for better, for better quality and better items and better benefits. I mean, if we're saying demands, I guess it ends up being a perk or a benefit for a gig worker. I don't know. Pick your words. <laughs> I'm just Sarah doing what I do, coming here to talk about the day and the shops and what we do and what's coming down the pike and how we feel and how we handle the frustration of Instacart. There's enough frustrations to, on a regular day, right? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you here the next time. Bye-bye for now.